Welcome to the first video of volume rendering in tiff to blender for fluorescence imaging. Let's take a look at what our data looks like. So we have um, this stack of C. elegans meiosis data. So uh, in where we're looking, which is um, late pro phase one, um, we have the homologous chromosomes that are bound together with the synaptonemo complex, which we see here in our Z-stack. Um, and we have six chromosomes, we have six, so we have six strands. Each of these have one designated crossover site where the paternal and maternal DNA um, exchange, um, which we have in our second channel. So we can see here through Z our different stacks. And then for all of this, we also have a time axis, which is maybe easier to see in the maximum intensity projection over Z. We can here see our time axis. And in our channel two, we see our spots moving. So let's see how we can render this in Blender. So we're in Blender. We have our scene, uh, which uh, comes preloaded which we don't really need. So we can select everything, either by just selecting it like this, or we can also do it through A and press X to delete everything. We also have here are the uh, keys I'm pressing. You can see this. Um, and we can go then go to scene properties in this tab on the right. If we're in the layout tab, the in the scene properties, we can find TIFF to Blender. And here we can then select our file uh, and we'll do this two channel version because we're only looking at the fluorescence data right now. And in the next video, we'll do the five channel version, which includes certain analysis channels. So we put in our file and then it reads out our pixel size, depending on what's in the TIFF file. And actually the, t the, the this read out open 065 for both of these. And we can, uh, but this is not correct. Uh, but we can still change this because uh, it was wrong in the actual TIFF file itself. So we can change this to open 2 and then it gets loaded with the right anisotropy. Um, otherwise, the axis labels are correct. Um, we want the surfaces, isosurfaces to be loaded and to have it load as a uh, light emitting volume because it's fluorescence data. So we can press load TIFF. And we get this box because we're in this, sur in this surface render mode. So we can go to our viewport shading, our, our rendered view, and then we can beautifully already see our six strands of synapse and complex. Um, then if we look back at this outliner window where we actually see all of our objects, we see that there's a cache with um, some data that we can click away. But there is also, with the name of our file, an object which contains the axes, the slicing cube, the surfaces, and the volumes. So we can take the entire object and we can also just move it with G uh, or we can scale it um, with S if we want. Um, and similarly for the slicing cube, this is also just one big cube that you can move with G and it will slice your object and scale with us. But it's nice to just cover the entire volume so we can see the entire volume. Then the surfaces, the axes we'll get to later and the surfaces are by default not shown on, on load, but we want to see our volumes. So for all of these, there is essentially two ways to manipulate how we're viewing our objects, both in, um, what data is actually in the scene um, and which and how is this data being visualized. So what data is in the scene, you can find here another gear icon for the volumes. This is only like which of the two channels is being included. And we can see this as uh, see the how this is being visualized um, under this material icon. So for channel 
one, which is currently just being shown as one big blue thing. We can go to how the volumes are being shown, how this emission is being shown. And here we find our color ramp, which is how we can threshold our data. So now we can actually see our single spots, which makes it look, look a lot nicer. So and for channel zero, we can go do the same thing and see how do we want to threshold our data. So that's the easiest way to quickly change your thresholding. Um, then you can also access these values in a different interface that is a lot more versatile, but that is a bit more complicated to understand, which is in the shading tab. In the shading tab, it switches render mode. So let's put it back in our normal render mode we have this here and here we can see how the shader is being set up so how this works is that we have all of these boxes are essentially functions so this reads out the data in the volume rescales it to between black and yellow so we can also change yellow to green and we have a green blue image it sends it to uh, make this volume emit light with this color. And then we get these two object, these two where we can, we direct it to a cube object, the slicing cube, and we say, let's slice it with this object. So if we want to change out the object, we could also um, delete this and point to a different cube. And this gets them put up. So here we can do all the same things that we can do uh, in here, this is the exact same interface. It's just here you can add, you can also add all kinds of different nodes to do this. And similarly, we also have this for what um, geometry gets included. Okay, so this is how to quickly, how to show the volume. So let's turn off the volume for now. So here we can turn off things in the viewport and for the render. So we'll get to rendering in video two. And we can look at the surface. The threshold is actually because it's a surface. So what a surface is, is it takes at a single pixel value. All pixels are scaled between zero and one. It will make a surface as a, a mesh as if that is where the surface is. So right now this is at 0 0.002 for channel one. And we can change this in under the gear icon because it's what geometry actually exists in the scene. And we can slide this up and we can see ah, here we have very noisy and we get to our actual spots. And we can also see for our uh, synaptic nemo complexes, how do they look? And so then th similarly, we have uh, materials, shaders for each of these channels. But then instead of them being under the volume, they're under surface because they're surfaces. And here we can, for example, make them more transparent. or even render them as if they're glass or something like this. But this is often um, a bit much for actually showing data, uh, for actually showing data. And we can, of course, also combine our two imaging modalities, our two, our two visualization modalities. So we can show the surfaces on our volumetric splines. Then the last part here is our axes. Our axes are this object and they are not as easy to change the, the appearance of in our tab here. So we actually need to go to the geometry nodes to do this. Um, but then we have a lot of tools for them. So by default, they're this box where we don't render the front of the box. And that's set here. Also, how many microns per tick this is, because this can be a grid. So let's set this to one micron. And we can see we have a full perspective grid, how this looks. And this is part of the reason why we include grids in uh, 3D renders, is that we often use a camera with a perspective lens um, instead of like an orthographic lens like this. So which means that if things are farther away from where we're viewing, 
they actually get smaller, just like our eyes work, which, because, which is very intuitive for humans to see. However, this means that a scale bar will not be correct for all parts of the image, so we actually need to have a grid to show this. And we have a bunch, we have a lot of um, different ways to show this box, so we can make the lines thicker and thinner. We can, and we can also make sure that we do show the front of the box or that we remove certain sides that we don't want to see those. And we can add also ticks to the edges. Which will give a bit more minimal look. So this is just how to load a single data set uh, in Blender and look around and use all of the thing, different parts that are immediately loaded. Um, in the next video, we'll be um, loading the same data set, but then with some more uh, with label masks, and we'll, we'll go through how to render an output image from this. Thanks for watching.